Warapin ducking under an uppercut. Warapin's making it easy for Lopez because he's standing outside and allowing Lopez to dictate the pace and choose where he wants the action to occur. Warapin's going to have to get in there and make the fight if there's going to be a fight. Yeah, he's got uh, Lopez is pretty relaxed. He moves when he wants to move. He punches when he wants to punch. Everything is in his control right now. Right hand lead by Lopez. And when you're fighting a guy like that, you got to make him uncomfortable in some area. Another right hand lead by Lopez and a little left hook inside. Warapin landed a straight left and now Warapin gets a little closer and lands another left upstairs. If he can get a little closer, all kind of good things are going to happen for Warapin. Great. Great. Lopez seemed to be telling Warapin there not to hit him during the clinch. <laughs> You want to coach him as you go. Maybe he takes time. Right hand lead lands for Warapin. It's tomorrow afternoon, I think, in Bangkok. You think you think traffic is stopped and time is stopped in Bangkok to watch this? Well, they love boxing. We know that. And he has a reputation of singing also. So. Off balance, Warapin sets up an opportunity for Lopez, and Lopez takes advantage with power shots. And a left of the body for Lopez to punctuate the round. Later on this evening, and not all that much later on, Fernando Vargas will be taking on Felix Trinidad in the biggest fight of Vargas's career to this point. Amazing that he's arrived at this juncture at such an early age. Ferocious Fernando, who I think should be called Precocious Fernando, is fighting in a mega fight before his 23rd birthday. Felix Trinidad has been here before. A year ago in this arena, he eked out the victory over Oscar De La Hoya, which set him up for what he thinks is his present status as the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport. Shane Mosley and Roy Jones have other things to say about that. Good job, good job. What a perfect stylist. Lopez is 30 feet away from Warapin all the way across the ring, and he's got his hands up in the classic fighting position. That's good. In my in my earlier days, I'd see a guy with his hands down. I'd rush over on the other side and knock him down. <laughs> so maybe he's had that happen to me him earlier. Probably has. He's a little piece of tin, but he's hard to bend. <laughs> he's a tough piece of leather, and he's well put together. You're right on. <laughs> he's, he's solid gold, and he doesn't fold. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting old. <laughs> he went to the body with a very good left hook that time. Carter Lopez did. Warapin has been outlanded by a near landslide margin in the first couple of rounds, fighting at a relatively slow pace. Everything going Lopez's way in the early going, and Warapin knows it. He's starting to take more chances to try to get inside. Lopez is talking, is talking to his Warapin opponent as the fight goes on. Yeah, like I said, I wonder if he speaks Thai. Maybe he learned it from reading Herman Hesse. Boy, that hurt. Yep, that hurt. Look at that left uppercut, left hook, right, straight right hand up the middle. And now, it, right hand lead. He gets right back in position to do it all over again. Most fighters, they fall all over and they're off balance. They can't do it again. And the right staggers Joaquin backward as Lopez, in perfect position, exercises leverage, fires combinations along the ropes, and wobbles Joaquin again. Warapin has been susceptible to the knockout since moving up in weight, and Lopez looks like he wants to finish early. Well, it's been a knockout night so far. Christy Martin got the early knockout. William Jockey got a relatively easy knockout. And Ricardo Lopez has Ratanapa Warapin going against the ropes. I think Warapin, who originally was a kickboxer, Needs to do some kicking, otherwise he's out of here. And he's out of here now. Richard Steele seeing enough in what was a technical mismatch between Lopez and Warapin. That's right. Not only that, 
And it's our third straight this match. Yeah, that's right. Well, you try to find out who in the world trained a fighter like Lopez, and you can get your young fighters to that gym so that he can learn. Because his, his name is Nacho Beristein, and, and we've seen him before, and he's one of the terrific trainers in Mexico who uh, obviously knows every wrinkle in the book. Someone has put the, a package together. How old is this guy after all? <laughs> Does it matter, George? <laughs> it's just Sorry. a number, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. I mean, you keep going with this 35, 35, 35, and I'm going to recommend group therapy for you. And you're big enough to have your own group. Yeah. <laughs> 34 is looking good. Thank you, sir. Ricardo Lopez. He'll be 35 on July 25 next year and showing no signs of slowing down as he simply blows away an experienced opponent. He kept the fight in control. He didn't make anything rough out of it. Now here's another look at some of Lopez's magnificent combinations. That was the uppercut. Now here comes the finish of the fight. He always detect goes to the body just to make the guy look down a little bit. And then he comes back up to the head. The thing I like is the balance and the footwork. I mean, as you pointed out, George, always in perfect position to throw the punch. And that's what you want to uh, got to do. Most fighters, they fall on you once they throw a hard shot, so they can't even come back. Goes up high, then up, 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 and the referee was right. Excellent stoppage by Steele. There's been a sadness in Richard Steele's life recently. His very, very close friend, Mitch Halpern, committed suicide a couple of months ago. It has shaken up the referee rotation here in Nevada and created some unusual situations. And uh, Richard wanted to point out to me tonight that the main event between Vargas and Trinidad would have been Mitch Halpern's fight. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 11 seconds in round number 3. A referee in charge, Richard Steele, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout and still the IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World, Ricardo Benito Lopez.